Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music. I want to talk about how you can play a song by Easton Corbin called Clockwork. And it starts out with this cool little lead solo where you can play third fret on the B string and do a slide to fifth fret. And then go back to third on the B. And then we do the three to five slide again. And then back to three. And then fifth on the B. And then third on the B. Fifth on the B. And then fifth on the G string. So it's kind of this three, five, three, three, five, three, five, three, five, five. And we kind of do that lick twice in the intro. And then you kind of hear where that goes down the second fret on the G string. And we do a slide to four. And then do a slide right back to two at the very end. So kind of that two, four, two to kind of tag it. And the chords that would kind of back up that lick would start on an A minor chord. When we play A minor, first finger goes to B on the first fret. Second finger on the D string, second fret, and third finger on the G string, second fret. And if you strum all those together, it sounds an A minor chord that sounds really, really sad. And then from the A minor, we'll be going to a C major chord. And all you really have to do is kind of take the third finger and go from the G string second to the A string third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord that sounds really happy. And then from the C, we'll be going to a G major chord. Let me play G major. First finger goes to A on the second fret. Second finger on the low E third fret, and third finger on the high E third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord that sounds really, really happy. And from the G, we go to an F major. You could do this as kind of a bar F, and we'll talk about the easy way to play this too. Normally, you do it as a first fret bar, second finger on the G string, the second fret, third finger on the A third fret, and the pinky on the D string third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an F major chord that sounds really, really happy. Just starting out, it gets substituted by something called an F major seven, where you do the first finger on the B string first fret, second finger on the G second fret, third finger on the D string third fret, and if you show the D string to the high E string, that sounds an F major seven chord. It sounds really groovy, and happy. And then from the F, we kind of end up going back to our A minor chord, and then our C chord, and then our G chord, and then our F. Through that intro, you could kind of work just down strokes, actually kind of a four down count works, kind of that A minor, C, G, F. And I'm kind of adding a little bit of muting to that, so kind of laying the flat of the right hand down to kind of, kind of make it a little bit of a, a little sneaky. Um, or you can do it as kind of a three plus five idea, kind of that A minor, two, three, C, one, two, three, four, five, G, two, three, F, one, two, three, four, five, A minor, C. favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So you took the A minor and just tried that a lot. You have down, down, up, up, down, 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 Now the weird part is that a lot of the chords kind of half, and you could do just a down, down, up of the strum pattern on each chord and kind of work it that way. Or if you're a little bit more adventurous, you can kind of half the strum pattern between the chords have the A minor with the down, down, and then go to the C for the up, up, down, down, and then go to the G for the down, down, and then go to the F for the up, up, down. So all together you have the A minor, C, G for the down, down, up, up, down, up, A minor, down, C on the up, up, down, G for the down, down, up, up, down, up. Or for myself what feels really good is something called the 16th note strum pattern. And what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot to the beat, right now we're kind of dividing that beat into two parts with our down, down, up, up, down, up. One, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a sixteenth note is, is where you divide that foot tap into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite sixteenth note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. And what I mean by that is if you take the A minor and do a down for four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you're doing. First beat. Then on the second beat, you're doing a down on one and down on three, up on four. So you're going one, two, three, four, down, down, up, down, 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 down. And on the third beat, you're doing an up on two, down on three. So you're going one, two, three, four, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down. And on the last beat, you're going down, up, down, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, up, down, 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 down. So all together, with the down, 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 and then hit the C with the up, up, down, down.
reverse verse. You could really work that either way. So if we did it with our down, down, up, up, down, up, you'd have the A minor, C, G, F, A minor, C, and then we do a G with the whole strong pattern. Or if you dig on the 16, you'd have A minor, C, G, F, A minor, C, G, F. And then from that first verse, then we're going into our chorus part. Chorus kind of mixes up a lot of the things we've just been talking about. So we kind of start on the F major and then the C, and then we got our A minor and our G. So you could kind of work that with that down idea if you're kind of digging on that. Or you can use the down, down, up, up, down, F, C, A minor, G. Or if you dig on the 16th, you can work it that way. A minor, G. And then that one has time through. From there, then we go into like a little piece of our intro. So we're going back to our A minor, C, G, F. Now something else I think about adding to the song though is bass notes. And a lot of times on that first down, the down, down, up, up, down, or the down, 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 up, up, down, down, down. You can throw in a bass note for the chord. So on the A minor, you have the A for the bass. On the C, you have the A for the bass. On the G, you have the low E for the bass. And on the F bar, you have the low E for the bass. So you have the D for the bass. So you can even work kind of that intro return with just the bass down up on each chord. Kind of A minor, C, G, F. Or you could use the bass in kind of half the pattern. Kind of A minor, C, up, up, down, G with the bass, down, up, up, down. Right on the A bass, down, C, up, up, down, G with the B bass, down, up, down. Or if you dig on the 16th pattern, you could work it as a bass, down, down, up. that with a bass down up up down up you have the a minor c g f a minor c g f we're gonna do on the 16th a minor c g f a minor c g f from there then we'll be going into our chorus part so we word that with kind of a bass down up on each chord f almost the stop time idea where you may want to do just a down on F, down on C, down on A minor, down on a G, but then it almost sounds like we go to an E minor chord where you do first finger on the A string second, second finger on the D string second, if you strum all those together, it sounds like an E minor chord that sounds really sad, and then from the E minor it's almost like we do that E minor to an F, and then we do another F, and you may want to work so through that bridge part, you have the F, C, A minor, G, F, C, A minor, G, I'm going to read F, C, A minor, G, E minor, F, F, to lead us into our last chorus. And then we're back to our F.
thing for myself, I really want to hear an A minor at the very, very end, kind of make people clap. But that's the basics of how you can start through clockwork by Easton Corbin. So good luck.